Hi guys and happy holidays, whoever you are, whatever you're celebrating, I hope you have a wonderful time of year given how crap the rest of 2020 has been so far. So today, seeing as it's Christmas, I thought I would release two videos. So the first one is an, a request video. So we're going to look at how we can automatically adjust rates using logic in iNav. And the second video, well, you'll see that in a sec. So let's get on with this one. Okay, so let's have a, a little chat about rates first. So oh, flight control has fallen out of the tree. <laughs> I'm sure they're used to being in trees, so I thought, why not? Um, but yeah, anyway, so rates. There are two different types of rates when we're talking about things like INAV. So there are traditional rates, which if you just got a receiver, you tend to set it up on a switch. And what that would mean is, you know, you'd have your full rates, which were 100%, move it to, um, say, rate number two, where that could be 75%, rate number three, it could be 50%. So they're sort of tra traditional rates. And the thing that gets confusing sometimes is you have rates in INAV for things like your pitch and roll. And what that is, is actually the, the maximum rate that it will turn in degrees per second. So they're, they're basically limiting the rotation around an axis with that. So it's it's a similar sort of concept with traditional rates we're limiting the throws and with those rates you're limiting the rotational speed but what we're looking at today is more a traditional um, type of rate so this is limiting the throws on the control surface where this came about was this post in the INAF fixed wing group so Larry Field first mentioned that he wanted different um, rates that only worked in manual mode so I put up a, a how-to post just a few screen grabs uh, of how it can be achieved sorry if this is confusing people this and this are both me I'm trying to use just my YouTube handle at the moment um, but for some reason sometimes Facebook will put a post up as the other profile um, so yeah just just to confuse people both of these two are me but yeah so i put a, a post of how to do it and then people were saying well you could just do it in the tx and forget about worrying about it in inav which is completely true um you can do rates and expo in your transmitter but if you do don't do them in inav so if you're going to do them in the transmitter just do them in the one place uh, that way you could have easily switchable rates and expo in your transmitter there's absolutely no fallacy there, nothing wrong with it. It's just two different ways of doing it. All I would say is when you configure it, just make sure that you're in your 100% full rates. That's that's one way of doing it. But the, the difference is, uh, firstly, he wanted it just in manual mode, which again, if you detect where your switch position is in manual mode, you could do it on the transmitter. But there's also another thing you can do in iNav, which... Um, is you can base it on other things. So, for example, your airspeed. A lot of models, if they fly faster, want lower rates because you need less movement to do the same amount of um, physical movement of the, the model. So that was one of the things that I said, you know, trans mixing it on a transmitter is fine, but you can do all these really cool things with it. And then someone, uh, I'm just going to have a look now. Uh, Robert here mentioned is there a video tutorial for doing it there wasn't but i'm doing it now so happy christmas robert so there are two areas we need to change things first of all we're going to change things in programming and then we'll change things in the mixer so what we'll do is have a look at the programming first so if i bring up what i'd posted in the group which I could actually put a link to this post if you wanted to have a look. I, I showed how to do it manually first, just using a switch, and it is going to be very, very similar. So it's really simple. All we all we need to do is have a switching parameter. In this case, I said, you know, we'll, we'll guess the, or 
will say that the switch is on RC channel 8 and when it's in the high position it will activate this and then what we also need is another check to see if we're in manual if it is then we can activate the the mix and then we need an, um, a not statement so that when we're not in that rate mode it should be um, to use the standard rates so that's that's the very simple look of it with a switch but what we're going to do instead is use our our flight parameters so we go flight and then what we'll look for is i mean I'll, i'm going to set it to ground speed but if you've got a pitot tube you could use airspeed which would probably actually be better so ground speed centimeters a second so i need to get this back up um let me say uh, 70 kph in so we're looking at 3000 3130 roughly so 3130 so if we're going over 70 miles an hour, this will be true. So if we're not worried about whether we're in manual or anything like that, we can just leave that as is. All we'd need is a not statement. Logic condition zero. So when we're above 70 miles an hour, again, you, you can obviously set this for your model. Uh, we'll be using one set of rates and when we're below 70 miles an hour we'll be using another set you could obviously add extra speed increases in there um, in which case you'd probably have to start using um, XORs uh, so if you wanted to do that have a look at my um, 3D distance from home tutorial because it covers the XORs in there but you'd basically be doing the same but instead of the distance from home you'll be basing it on the the speed of the aircraft but we'll keep it simple for this this example so we're above 70 miles an hour we want to use lower rates so we just save that so mixer so you can see here i've got a standard airplane mixer so we have our four channels here so we obviously have uh, two separate servos for the ailerons we have a servo for the rudder and we have a servo for a pitch so these are all set to 100 percent weight at the moment so what we need to do is change those to use logic condition one what i'm going to do i'm going to leave your because a lot of times people don't really change the your so i'll leave your as always it just for another example if you did want to change the, the weight of the your you'd just do it the same as we're doing for the rest of these so what we'll have is below 70 miles an hour we'll be using 100 percent weight on all of these so now what we need to do is add in our mixer rules for the above 70 mile an hour so what we're going to do is add in two stabilized rolls and a stabilized pitch and all we need to do is set these to the same servo numbers so we're going to use three four and two So that's all all good so far it's the same now we just need to set these to logical or logic condition zero which is our above 70 mile an hour and we'll change these to whatever we want so if it's 50 percent we'll set them to 50 this will obviously depend on your model itself and then save and reboot and that's all there is to it so it's it really is that simple so if we go back to programming over 70 miles an hour we'll be using logic condition zero so logic condition zero the weight will be um 50 percent if we're not above 70 miles an hour We'll be using logic condition one which is the weight of 100 and for the yaw we're always going to be using 100 percent
So there we go. That's a quick example of how to change the rates of your control surfaces based on the speeds of your model using iNav. I hope you guys found this useful. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell icon to get more tutorials like this. And it also helps get this information out to more people so they can learn how to do this too, which you know is more important really. <laughs> um, but yeah, have a great Christmas. Fly your models like you stole them. See ya.